Right, YouTube, hello. It's been a while. It'll probably be a while yet before I actually get this stuff uploaded to the internet. It's September, September the 12th actually. Uh, and I'm in uh, the Freeman's Waterhole. And here's the big girl. We're on the big girl because the big girl hasn't sold. Didn't sell while I was away. Hasn't sold since I've been back. So I thought, oh well, fuck it. <laughs> I'll um take her back to Gyra. You know, right round a bit. Keep the battery charged, that kind of stuff. So today we're riding back from the entrance. You know, spent the night with Kerry down there, and. Uh, on our way home it's a spring morning it was fresh you know by coastal standards got my phone got my wallet yeah morning now so we're on our way so today we're going to go up the just go up the New Wellington Highway take this sort of you know the relaxed ride home I'm just a bit worried about the battery whether it's charging or being drained by something. Um, had to charge it up last night. So, I thought it was gonna, you know, gonna have to, um, gonna have to, uh, you know, get the NRMA to give me a push start or something. Better off being somewhere closer to civilization than uh, in the middle of nowhere on Thunderbolt sort of thing, you know. Hopefully this uh, mic is recording everything and all that. I've probably got a lot to talk about or nothing at all, I'm not sure yet. Let's see what happens. do is we'll go into, we'll take this road into uh, Pellor, Maine, then into Curry, then onto the Hunter Expressway, up to Singleton, Musselbrook, Aberdeen, Scone, Murrurundi, Tamworth, via Wallabadara, then Nemingar, Moonby, Vendemere, Ural, Ramadal home. We have. Wallace Creek. That goes all the way into Maitland. It runs through Maitland. It's more or less a kind of a dividing line between Maitland and East Maitland, really. This road 
you know, I've been riding on this road, driving on this road for many, many, many years. That through Freeman's and up this way, you know, takes you up the valley, takes you to the wineries actually, if you turn left, up here instead of going straight ahead like we will. Um, takes you into Cessnock and out that way. And it's just a good way to, you know, get off the bloody M1, which is the most boring bit of road in the history of the world. It's more boring than the Nullarbor. Probably because so many twits out there trying to kill you. Because it would be the truck who decides to take this road that was nice of him he's a good lad Good lad. Keep looking for a blinker on this side because of the Harley. When I first got on the Harley, I kept looking at them for both on this bar. Uh, it's ridiculous. Not coppers up there, is it? The gendarmes? No, don't think so. There's a biker and he's sporty. I like sporties. They're a bit unfashionable amongst people who are, you know, big twins, as it were. But I've always liked the look of them and the sound of them, actually. Yeah, yeah, I had that sporty for a brief time. It wasn't my bike back then. I'd like one a lot more now, probably. Um, you know, I bought it. It was, I had an old shovel sportster that I bought up my brother Tim so he could buy a, a big twin like a I don't know what it was now but it was a, an 80 cube you know shovel head some sort of FL thing yeah it was a good bike you know he wanted that because he was living out at Leeton then and had stopped going around corners all the time sort of thing slow down flunky or the wallopers will get ya um, I only kept it for a few months and sold it on and I think I bought the Norton after that but um, it just sort of, you know, I was living in Sydney at the time and going up and down the old road you know, scratching foot pegs and all that kind of stuff, you know, so it didn't suit my needs and it vibrated like fuck actually <laughs> at, at road speeds, you know, at touring speeds Here we are in Curry, having just passed through the village of Pelor, Pelor, Maine. There's a lot of sort of, you know, Welsh kind of names around here because of uh, sort of the coal mines here. A lot of coal miners traditionally, you know, coming from Wales and north of England, Yorkshire, that kind of area. Fucking mirror off. I've got about that completely. Fool of a tick. I haven't got many tools either. It's with me to to um tighten it up. I got a shifter, I suppose. Probably do something with that. Yeah, 
and just around this speed is not all that happy which is unfortunate because that's the speed limit <laughs> sell motorcycles in a general tool this guy's going like hard but going hard now look at this stupid cunt there's always fucking one isn't there anyway stop whinging you're out in the motorbike having a good time um, yeah motorbikes no motorbike is really happy at the speed limit are they you know it's just that funny thing curry curry oh look out curry courthouse everyone's outside on the bloody stealing cars <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut up, Sean. Talk about fucking, you know, judgmental. When I when I lived at Maitland as a kid, I played for East Maitland Griffins rugby league team, and uh, we used to play against Curry, West Maitland, Tanam, but you know. And curry was always a hard, a hard game. They were hard cunts, you know. Even in like under seven, they were hard cunts. <laughs> All right, settle down, big girl. Slow down a little bit. Davai, Batsu Junge. quite happy at these kind of speeds but at these kind of speeds it's also very happy to chew up a fair bit of juice you know I'm a 
a bit sort of riding unfit. Just can't quite get myself comfortable at the moment. And it's been a while. for this for this monster. Anyway, as you can see, it's a lovely day for it. Cool, but not cold. I've got a jumper on, but no neck warmer or anything, just the summer gloves. Hopefully we just get to stroll along in the sunshine and enjoy the sunny weather. I've seen a few of those things around lately, the, um, the Z900R replica things, you know. I don't mind them, I do alright. I like the old Z900, you know, or Z1000. They're a bit of a thing in their day. Now they're about as big as a posty bike, you know, but in comparison to the big girl. They were huge when they came out. And enormously powerful. I think that about 70 horsepower, if that, maybe 65. Oh, maybe. I don't know, I'll have to check that one. But it certainly wasn't anything like 100. Better slow down, eh? Oh, like bloody coppers will get us. The dirty rotten gendarmes. The bullet. You might have to go out, yeah. Chase bullet. Big 
girl. Die große schöne Dame, ja. Sag ich mal so. works for a change, it's nice to see. Anyway, yeah, so I, I, what I, I did something unusual yesterday <laughs> for the first time in, I don't know, like, you know, more than 40 years, I reckon, I caught a train in Australia. Like, I've caught trains overseas and stuff, but I caught a train here in Australia. I caught the train from Armdale, well, I got the bus from Gaira. A friend of mine, Adrien, she brought me, took me to the bus stop with all my gear, you know, my big bag full of you know, jacket, gloves, helmet and all that kind of stuff. A couple of tools, whatnot. Um, took me to the bus stop in Gaira there at the post office and I got the bus into Armadale. Then the train from there down to Wyong and then Kerry picked me up from the station at Wyong. You know, I wasn't able to get up there to to Gaia to uh, give me a lift down, you know, so I thought, oh, well, fuck it, I'll catch the train, you know. And it was a real experience because I haven't been on, like, that kind of train in Australia for, it's got to be 40 years, it, well, probably longer. The last time I can remember catching a train was, like, in the early 80s up to uh, Gosford with my mate Roddy, and we went up to pick up some, I don't know what we went up there for, but anyway... Um, Something to do with motorbike parts, I think. Anyway, so um, yeah, so this train journey—it's kind of like flying now. You know, they've got sort of more or less flight attendants on there. You know, who you know check your ticket and they know who you are. You know, because you've had to book in and all that. They go, "Oh, hello, Sean. How are you going there today?" I'm, you know, Vanessa or whoever, and I'll be your attendant for today's train journey and it was actually pretty pleasant because the countryside you know from Armadale down through Walker Road which you've seen on my some of my ride videos you know lots of kangaroos to look at you know beautiful streams and uh, all the stuff you know
the next stop. So I said, this road work here has been going on for fucking years. And they finally got the overpass done. Anyway, so Kerry and I um, had to put this battery on the charger and I'm hoping that it's holding a charge. Otherwise, you know, could be in trouble next time I try and start it. Um, you know, and she's got a that nice little flat at North Entrance there. You know, she's got two of the cats. I ended up, I had to go down there the other week and pick up Keith, the big orange cat we've got, the marmalade, and take him back to Gaira. He was just too stressed out living down there. You know, he's a country boy, so he's fucking living the life up there with me now. Two bachelors, you know. <laughs> getting on the piss all <laughs> feeding the fuck out of him, you know. Anyway, uh, so I put the battery on the charger, etc, etc. Uh, there we are, looking in the world, across the plain, the valley, the valley plain, to, towards Singleton over there. Um, So we went out to this Mexican place. I don't remember what it's called. We've been there before. In the entrance, just down the main street of the entrance there on the corner. Or what is it, Coral Street or somewhere? Um, uh, don't know which number. Yeah, I think it's called, it might be Coral Street. Anyway, done that. And warm enough to sit outside, so we did that. And, and they make the fucking best tacos I've ever had in my life. They make these pulled pork tacos. And uh, and they're in these kind of crispy shells that are not like the ones you buy off, you know, Woolies, the Shelford supermarket kind of thing. Um, and, they, and the pulled pork is just fucking delicious. You know, the, with a token bit of salad and some guacamole in there, you know, guacamole in there, and um, and then you can get some extra sauce and stuff, and the waiters and that are really, they're really upbeat, really kind of, a little bit in your face, you know, and, and uh, but okay, you know, quite not annoying, so that was really good, really positive about the food, and the fucking food is brilliant, now Carrie's a vegetarian, so she had the sort of vegetable natosh thing, which also looked really good. So I really enjoyed that. It's about the third time or so, third or fourth time, sort of, I've either been there with her or had um, takeaway from there, you know. And uh, then after that, we went and had an ice cream. And then had a pretty, pretty early night, really, you know, just... I was a bit tired after my long train journey. <laughs> but it's, it's just hilarious. Like if you get bored sometime and you get older, because I've got a like a pensioner's free journey thing for vouchers, you know, for a couple of trips a year. And I've never ever used one. And I'm not sure how often I'd do it. But just, you know, for once, you know, when you get when you get to that age where you can travel for free. Um, you should do it. Catch a country train. You know, it's um, it's a great thing to do. Just, just to soak up the countryside, and you know, you can. They've got a buffet car. You know, you can get things like, you know, pies and sausage rolls and uh, vegetable pasties. And there's beer, wine. You can also order a proper lunch have that brought to you, you know, and it's just really good, and here we are coming into Singleton, downtown Singleton, and for some reason or other, Singleton has like the most expensive petrol on this journey, always, you know, it must be in some distance from Sydney or something which makes people stop here, you know, instead of other places, so they put their prices up and capitalise ruthlessly. So 
just over there on the left there you can see a, an old World War II Matilda tank. The Australian Army used them in the Second World War in the Western Desert and also I think in, I think some of them were in the islands, you know, Pacific Island campaign, New Guinea, uh, Raval or something, I don't, I don't know, I'm not sure about that, it just rings a bell. And I tell you what, you know, that, those were the days when, when tanks were real tanks, you know, <laughs> it did about, I think they had like a maximum, I remember looking it up once, they had a maximum speed of about eight miles an hour. Fuck me, take you forever to go anywhere. You'd have to stick them on the back of trucks all the time. <laughs> <laughs>